Oh, here we are. This is Bonnenberg. Is this thing even recording? Yes. Okay. Good. PST7s are here. They just came in. Well, they just came into me because I had to wait till they came into actual dealers and I had to give them my money and have them ship me one. But they just came in. Here's the deal. Here it is. Peisty. PST7. Eight. 18 inch thin crash. There we go. What we're looking at here, in my opinion, well, let's just play it first before I start yapping about it. All right. And then I'll yap. All right, and then of course what happens is that you know when you go to mysymbol.com or whatever, and it's a crash, and then and you go to watch the sample, and the guy's like, that drives me fucking crazy. It's a crash symbol. The first thing you should fucking do is go, right? Okay. Sorry, I had to get that out of my system. Okay, so PST7, a great symbol, especially for the money. Peisty has B8 alloy down cold, okay? I've gone in other videos about other companies that I think tried to really work with it and they couldn't really figure it out, so they relegated it at great profit to their bottom line, to their lower lines. Also, too, they could look at Peisty and say, hey, look, yeah, B B8's great. We make all our crappy symbols out of it. But there's a, there's a secret Pisces knows what they're doing with B8. Okay, let's get into it a little. Okay, so what we'll do, let's give it a swell. Okay, so here it is. What I think it, what I think what we're looking at, remember, I mean, this is my opinion. It's my channel. I just happen to have a YouTube channel. I know there's a lot of other guys that know just as much or more Pisces stuff than I do, but hey, this is my channel, so I'm the guy talking. So what, check this out. PST7, what I think we're looking at here is they essentially took a PST5 blank, right? They get the disc, press it, and there, take that. And I think what they did was, is under the bell is laid, look at that, look at that shine. Right in your eyes, you will buy a mink coat. Check it out. What they did was, is under the bell here, this looks identical to the lathing. This is going to come off again, for the love of God. To that of the PST5. I mean, the shape, if you really go to a store and just eyeball them, the shape and everything, you're looking at the same disc that's been formed and pressed into a shape, okay? But see underneath the bell there? It's the, it is literally the exact same as what's under the bell here. There, so what I'm saying is, let me just clear that up a little. The whole symbol's laid by like a 2002 in Switzerland by 2002 lathing elves with just the exception of underneath the bell dome. Okay? So essentially what we're looking at here I think is a PST5 disc that they then pressed into the shape and then they lathed into 80, 80, 92% or 87% of 2002 because it stops here and this is the PST5. Alright. Got that off my system. Alright. So, let's do a couple things though. So here's the deal. I have a PST5 Thin Crash 18. This is two years ago model. Real, real quick aside, they recently took a lot of these models, they got rid of them, the PST5s. And they also, the existing ones, they thinned out a little. Literally. Okay, so anyway, where I'm going with that, come hither. Where I'm going with that is the weights. Okay, the PST7 18 inch Thin Crash weighs in at... 1189 grams. That is 1189 grams. Sorry. Maybe that's why they don't do it on my symbol that good. Uh, 1189, okay? This PST5, again, which I think is the exact same blank, Thin Crash 18 is actually heavier though. 1377 PST5 thin crash, but a quick aside because I'm a Peisty nut and a lot of you are too, I think. Well, I think, I don't know, but I am. 
is this is 1377 okay so 137 versus 1189 that's like almost 200 gram differential of the PST7 thin crash being lighter than this PST5 thin crash but I think what happened was go read the Pisces literature I think what they did is they literally thinned them out I do not think they make the PST5 thin crash anymore I think it's a great symbol if you see one on eBay grab it in my opinion but they think so if they did if they didn't discontinue the thin crash this thin crash they might have take maybe taken 200 grams off it so we really might actually weight wise compare apples to apples here you know what I'm saying anyway let's do a little bell sounding between the PST57 the PST7 Do with all those stuff, you know. But anyway, here it is, and you can you can hear the weight differential. I mean, you can hear, you know, that that this is a, a heavier symbol. Okay, I mean, obviously the pitch of it, but also too, in a heavier symbol, especially the lower line, everybody stuff, it's sort of thicker, platey. Like it's, in my opinion, it's not as it's not as uh, tapered. Like on the more expensive, but you know, symbols it often really gets thinner toward the edge. Where a lot of the time on the lower budget stuff, even Zildjian and Sabian, they just literally just press it, kind of a little lay the knot, and there you go. But whatever Peisty does to make their B B um, B8 alloy sound terrific, God love them, because I know other symbol companies haven't figured it out. In my opinion, mine has come close. Anyway, but here we go. PST7, 18-inch thing crash. PST5, 18 inch thin crash from a couple of years ago, so it would be the older, slightly heavier weight. But now, here. Is, to me, the ultimate. This is the gatekeeper of Peisty 18-inch B8 alloy doom. It's like, ah, this is it. 2002 black label, 1976 medium, okay? Remember, the, the labels they put on the symbols back in the day was just at the time they said, all right, well, our thinner ones are going to be this. We'll call them thin. We'll typically do this weight or, okay? That's why Bonham played an 18-inch ride. In 1971, 2002, because an 18-inch ride in 1971 was a lot thinner than a, a 1995 18-inch 2002 ride. They beef those babies up, okay? All right, and that is my opinion, but it's also true. Anyway, so here it is. This is the, I think, ultimate B8 sound, classic 2002. And those who really know 2002s will really know, too, also, that... There is a ringing that occurs in 2002s. In Giant Beats 2, it did. Uh, to, to the extent, you know, giant, it's a long story. Older Giant Beats, in my opinion, original ones, 1967 to 74-ish, really varied in their quality. I mean, their sound. They sound, an 18 wouldn't sound exactly like an 18 like you would have these days in, in various lines. In my opinion, from what I've heard, there, there was a, uh, like a Zildjian or like a B8, uh, or a B20, a Sabian or Zildjian, how you want to listen to a couple different ones so you get the one that sounds good to you, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how it was, I think, with the Giant Beats bat in your, not the reissues, those are very consistent. Anyhow, what we're looking at here The 1976, 2002 medium, in my opinion, this one I'm holding here, I think is, is the sound. This is the sound that sold me on 2002s when I first heard the song remains I mean, the same, or heard old uh, Deep Purple records, or heard Fleetwood Mac. You just heard 2002s all over the joint back in the day. Here it is. What I started to say, and of course, went off on a tangent about 2002s. Is there's a ring in them? It's a certain frequency. Technically, it might be you know, it might not be that tight. Different sizes might, have, but it's a. It sounds a lot like back in the old days when we had telephones, actual phones. I mean, it sound patronizing, but a lot of kids today I know have cell phones, and you know, they used to be you know, they used to have phones that were house phones that actually had bells in them, a pair of bells that went.
it like that. That you hear in 2002s. I can't tell how many times when I'd be playing my 2002s, I'd stop because I think the freaking the phone was ringing. And I've talked to a lot of guys who said, "There, I know exactly what you're talking about. This one's ultimate. It has it." But that ring assists in making the 2002s have a crash, have a shimmer that goes on for a long time. It might not as long. I think the grandpappies of those were the original giant beats. A lot of those that went on for a real long time. Listen to old Zeppelin stuff like um, No Quarter, uh, Down by the Seaside, you know, some of that, you know, uh, Zeppelin, Forey, House of the Holy stuff. You, you really hear that. Now, obviously, they sometimes slowed the tape down, they use compression, whatever, but I've heard, I heard a lot of original Giant Beats. It, it, it is the symbol, too, okay? But, a lot of, I think, the shimmer that the 2002 actually relies on, or what makes it up as it goes on, is that high-frequency ring which I don't think I heard quite as much on as the old Giant. The Giant beats really then really seem to rely on the shimmer part, like the, not the, the higher ring. Anyway, my point is, this is the grandpappy, okay? Compare, this is like the symbol, okay? This is like the, this is the one that I think should be in the Hall of Fame of Peisty Freak shows, right on the altar, okay? the ring. Let me take these headphones off. Yeah, it's got to show up on tape, or at least on what you're hearing. There's a ring in there. It's a, okay, you don't really have, you have barely any of that with the PST7 here. And part of that might be because it is an 1189 gram thin crash model. Because the thinner the symbol is, the less you will hear that. There's a teeny bit of it, but again, that is a thin crash in all fairness. It is 1,189 grams. And then back to the PST5 18-inch thin crash, which is a thin crash, but to older specs heavier. Again, I don't think there's a lot of laving, laving that took any beef off the edges. Like the old, lower line stuff typically more or less was the same thickness as you go across the cymbal. That's kind of gives it sometimes a plate-y sound. Like you're hitting a plate. You hear that. For, you hear that in the, even everybody's cheaper stuff. Even Pisces cheaper stuff, but Pisces still really knows B8 and, and, and that shimmer and everything comes over it and takes control of it. But that very first impact. And there's that ring. This is because it's heavier, but it's not quite the same ring as the 2002, which I think, you know, obviously they put more effort in. You know, the bell shape is different. It's a smaller, lower, much more integrated bell versus these bell or cups, okay? All right. So, anyway, back to the PST7. I think that they're great symbols. This is a thin crash. I got a thin crash because the sound files on Peisty site are terrific. Check them out. They're really honest. But I have, you know, I mean, I, if, I think if I got, it'd be nice to have the PST7 crash, 18 crash. But, I mean, it, it, I don't want to have something that just sounds, this is thinner. I knew it was going to be thinner. I didn't know it was going to be 1189. But you can tell me, listen to the, you know, it is a thin crash. And I was curious to see if it really was going to be almost the same way as this thin crash. But Peisty sort of, again, sort of threw a curveball at that because they came out when they introduced these and said, oh, by the way, we're not making thin 18-inch thin crash anymore. And also, too, we're actually putting less metal in them to thin them out a little, like literally make them a lighter symbol. So that sort of threw that hell in the handbag. PST7, I would totally recommend getting it. If I was Peisty, though, I would kind of worry about it cannibalizing into their upper-level stuff, at least their 2002s, because it doesn't sound the same but it sounds like, well, like my buddy Steve, you his dad, like his lawyers, like a re much better than a reasonable facsimile thereof. Meaning seriously, like especially that first, the initial like this part, like there and it, you, especially from the stage and stuff, even with like much lower line, well from the stage, you, it's really even hard to tell. But it's very close. I mean obviously there's different factors at work here. I mean, the, the bell size, classic uh, 2002 smaller bell. I mean, look at that bell, small. It's almost like a mini cup, like a Zildjian mini cup bell. You know, that's kind of really what it is. Um, and that makes the 2002 sound. But anyway, so what I'm saying is obviously, even though they laid this baby like a 2002, um, it's, you know, the bell shape is different. You know, the, the, the shape of the symbols. I mean, there's other things that go into it, right? Plus this is machine hammered. You'll see that this, though, here's the thing. The hammering in this symbol is the same size hammering you see in the 2002s and the 505s 
most of the Zildjian hammering, or I mean the Peisty hammering up until they kind of started, remember in the 200 series and the 400 series, they started using that real big hammering on the lower, they used it on the lower line stuff well, but they also used it on some uh, sound creation stuff. But then they started using it when they came out with like this, not so much the signatures at first, but the, um, the sound formulas. You see like in the full rides, you see that big, huge hammering. Well, and they also, you know, they, on the, on the, well, at least in the PST5s I've had, I don't know if they just changed them, but at least the hammering, you can see the hammering, you can see the large hammering, like the 200 series, 400 series, um, you know, that big, it sort of alternates, okay? So there's a bigger hammer than a smaller, than a bigger, and also, too, I think some of these are, um, sometimes there, there are slight discrepancies too, depending on how hard it hits, you know, it doesn't go in as far, but generally speaking, what Pisces look like they did here on the five, on the PST uh, 5 series is the bigger hammer, smaller hammer, bigger hammer, smaller hammer, bigger hammer, smaller hammer, bigger hammer. Okay, so that's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll see on the damn you on the PST 7, it's pretty much the same thing except there's no bigger hammering. It's all the smaller dimple hammering, like you would see on the smaller ones or on all the 2002s. And but it's all but it does seem to be seven as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it goes seven deep. But there's not the huge hammering, okay? It's just, but it, there's also not as much of it. It's, it seems a little, no, I guess it's about the same amount. But obviously on a 2002, though, there's much more ha ha I mean, hammering. Much more. And also, too, what, uh, what they did with the 2002s to the people who do, and it'll be like myself, and they did this on, on, on other symbols as well of the higher lines, is there'd be the regular hammering, but they'd also hammer out to the edge. There, there, there's hammering all the way out to the edge on these 2002s. Whereas on the PST7, it sort of stops more or less where the PST5 does about right here. Not all the way really to the edge. So, great symbol I think for the money. Again, I think it's, it, and I used to say, I remember, because I always loved the lower line <clears throat> Peisty uh, bronze stuff. You know, and like some of the old 404s that, you know, like that 404 22 inch ride I have. I love that symbol, it's really dark. It's like back in the day, Peisty either used an altogether slightly more soft or malleable B8 for a while that they then maybe changed on their 2002s but still used on their 404s. I mean, you'll see some old 404s with the bells. I mean, it's a soft B8, right? But you'll see early 2002s like that too. Uh, but not, maybe not quite as soft. Anyway, it doesn't seem like it's the case that they don't really use that soft metal anymore, it seems to me. People might say, well, you know, maybe as time goes by they get softer. I don't think so. I think it was something was different. But anyway. Here we are. Um, the uh, what the heck was I just talking about? Uh, I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, I was always a fan of the uh, the lower line Peisty uh, B8 stuff. Like the, there was a bronze 502 series, which was great. They made it for a while. I mean, they were more platy. Again, those cheaper lines didn't, weren't really, I think, lathed. The lathing didn't remove a lot of metal as you went down the cymbal, so it was pretty much the same thickness, which to me results in sort of a plate effect of the crash, which I mentioned before. Which you, you hear even in this PST5, because I think it's not really lathed thinner, but this one is. I, in my, I mean, what, that's the, that the point I'm trying to make, is that when they send, when they lathe this ba baby with the 2002 lathing, it's not just the way it looks, but I think they actually did lathe a taper to the cymbal. Okay, so again, I was talking about cannibalization. I'd be a little worried about that. I mean, I, I mean, God, would you spend $110 on this or 250 on a, I mean, some guys might not really appreciate or really give a shit about some of the nuances of the ring. Do you know what I'm saying? Might be like, you know, and I wouldn't play them. So, oh wait, hang on. So let's, let's still go. So the 2002, this, the baby of the decade, the ultimate put in the vault. This is how they should all like, I think, be compared. PST7. You know, to me, because probably the shape and the fact that it's a little lighter, it is almost kind of like a cross. There is some B, B, there is some like 602 sound in there as compared to the 2002, I think, because of the bell shape. And I mean, and it's thinner or whatever Mojo Pisces does with their symbols. Um, but I will say this too, you know, there is even. It's not just, I mean, it's Peisty. It's not just necessarily the B8, because there are some 602 symbols, too. Peisty's 602s, even though they're B20 alley, like, 
alloy like Zildjian's or Sabian's, regular bread and butter top of the line stuff, those 602s still have that metallic Peisty shimmer to them. Go on Peisty's site and bring into your sound room. Bring in a Peisty 20 inch 2002 crash. Bring in a medium ride, a 602 medium ride. Put that baby in there. And then bring out a 20, a 20 inch uh, uh, giant beat multi. Put in a 20 inch giant beat thin. Put in a 20 inch Formula 602 thin crash. And just compare those guys. But listen to that medium ride crash. It's beautiful. And it sounds, I mean, you hear almost the ring in it. Pisces just, they do something to their cymbals. If you like that, right? They really do. And I will say, you know, I wonder if even like with the onslaught, I think. You know, a lot of Chinese cymbal companies are making a lot of these cymbals a lot cheaper and they're getting better and better at the sound. I almost wonder if Peisty's like, is thinking like, well, you know, we do make B8 and we make it well. Maybe they're just, because, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that's been coming out of China or some of these other countries, <clears throat> um, it, it, really in cost cutting and sort of really competing on price, is B20 alloy, okay? There's not a lot of B, I mean, the B8 alloy that people put out cheap, people might say, oh, there's plenty of P cheap B8 alloy out there. But the thing is, is the cheap B8 alloy symbols sound, they sound cheap. Or they don't sound like the inex more inexpensive Peisty B8 alloy, because B8, Peisty knows B8. You know, that should be like a t-shirt. Peisty knows B8. And if I were at Zildjian or Sabian, I, I would have, see, I think back in those days, those guys did kind of try to figure out B8. But I think they either didn't pursue it, or they just couldn't, or what. And they just, you know, they were fortunate enough to, they relegated it to the lower lines, and they made tons of money doing it. Because even lower, lower quality B8 still sounds good, especially hats and stuff from the stage and stuff. But to really, but lower quality B20 sounds like shit. <laughs> I mean, it does. If you just get like B20 plates, I mean, they can really sound dinky. But, you know, B8 can even on its own, just as an alloy, can sound good because it's kind of more musical, I think, with more copper. Like, it's not as brittle or something. Um, but that said... Maybe Pisces just thinking, well, it's maybe one or two of these Chinese companies is going to start making good sounding B8 alloys. So maybe they're like, well, let's do this. Let's, let's kind of start coming down on price and call it a PST7. I know it's a little convoluted. My brain moves a little faster than my mouth sometimes. But um, there you go. It's a great, I think the PST7s are terrific symbols. And I think that they're, you know, Pisces always goes in and out of these phases where they have 20 jillion, I mean, they have so many lines now. You know, <laughs> PST 8s, PST 7s, PST 5s, PST 3s, 602s, 602 minor essential, signatures, masters, I mean, go, uh, giant piece, I mean, it goes on. You know what I mean? 20s. I mean, so eventually, every so often, they discontinue some of the lines at dawns, I mean, they have a lot of stuff. But I think the move might be here with Pisces. They might maybe be seeing, you know, somebody might eventually kind of know how to figure out, figure out how to make good sounding, I mean, really good sounding B8. And I think maybe this might be their sort of maybe insurance policy or maybe they just want to get used to maybe lower price symbols. There's a flood of symbols coming in from different parts of the globe. That's my editorial. Anyway, great symbols. I, the hats, the 14-inch um, uh, the hats sound terrific. All of them. I think they have a light hat, a medium, and a heavy hat. I think they have three different hats. Um, I think they're really terrific. I do. And I used to say when I would get my... Of course, I went into this story about 10 minutes ago. I was always a fan of the bronze 502 or the 50, regular 502s or the 502 pluses and, and these PST5s. They have a slight, again, a platey thing a little because I don't think they really lathe a taper into them. But still, they sound good. I always loved them. You know, and I used to say to myself, I'd say, man, you know, this would be such a great symbol. Like this blank, this shape. If you lathed it, I didn't say, hey, if you lathed it like a 2002 and call I didn't say, I just thought if you lathed it more like a, um, just with a finer... Well, like lathing, like if it wasn't, yeah, this is a bad example of the PST5 because they lay them pretty good. It looks pretty alpha E on the top. But like if you were looking at like an old, um, you know, like the old 502s uh, before they went 502 plus, you'd think like if you just maybe finely lathed it or if you did maybe make it a little thinner at the edge, it would be a great sounding symbol. Peisty, and for all the times I've called Peisty and said, hey, bring back the 602s or, you know, you guys made giant beats, bring those back. I never said that to them. I mean, they did this on their own. God love them. Here it is, man. It's a five, it's a PST5 that they lathed and, and treated like a 2002. It's terrific. All right, so check them out at your local dealer. I don't work for Piety, but I was dying to get my hands on this. God, it's so cool.
Just that sustain. It really is a great crash because it's so clearly a thin. It is. It's a thin. It's a thin crash sound and crash. This doesn't sound like a thin crash. This sounds like. You know, to me, when I play this against like a regular 2002 crash, they're about the same weight. You know what I mean? This is a genuine, like, thin crash. It is 1,189 grams, and I think they do taper it via the lathe. So that's it. Oh wait, real fast, what I'm going to do? Let's compare. Let's put the let's put the 505 on. Let's get rid of this PST5. And I'll put one of my favorite symbols of the decade, which to me is a very reasonable facsimile thereof of the 2002 Grandpappy. Is the 505? I think I mentioned this before. Okay, remember the lathing on a 505 is almost identical to that of a 2002 except for the secondary lathing. What they do in the 2002s and the 505s, and they do like a, there would be a primary lathing which was real tight and fine. And then they put like a secondary lathing. And on the 505 it would be the same equidistant between each one of those if you can see. The older 505s had a thinner spacing, the, the later ones had a more wide spacing. Right, anyway, so what we'll do is we'll go the 505 crash model, 505 18 inch crash, my favorite Desert Island 18 inch B8, and don't get me wrong, this is the grandpappy of sound, but if somebody said, somebody said you can have two of these or one of these, I'd take two of these. You be the judge on these guys. Here is an 18 inch 2002 medium 1976. Okay? Whatever you think it sounds like, just hear, apart from my blah blah blah, just here they are. Okay? Medium 2002 medium, what I think is the ultimate. PST7. The 505. The 505 weighs 1397. Again, the 2002 weighs 1444, and this PST 7 18 inch thin crash weighs 1189. So let's just play them. So 505, PST 7, 2002. So there you go. Hopefully it's a helpful video. You know, I don't want to get too, I mean, there's a lot I could yap about, obviously, because I can yap forever about this stuff. But bottom line, PST7, great line. Peisty might be cannibalizing a little, but maybe you know something we don't with other companies coming in and really wreaking havoc on the symbol industry as we know it. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, more videos on the way, and if you can make it to Chicago Drum Show, that'll be terrific. It's a great show, man. you got to check it out. Thank you.